welcome everyone at Chatham House. My name is Ghadi Sari. I am an Asfari Academy Fellow here uh, at Chatham House, uh, hosted by the Middle East and North Africa program, which is why um, it's a real pleasure to welcome you to the, to the inaugural Asfari Forum, uh, which is um, the first in a series of forums uh, that are kindly um, presented to us by the Asfari Foundation. Um, I would like to just uh, remind you that this uh, uh, this is on the record, and um, you're, uh, you're welcome to uh, use Twitter using the hashtag uh, CHEvents, but I'll please uh, ask you to please put your phones on silent mode. Um, uh, just going to present our um, great panel today, so um, I'll start with um, Mehyar Kalim, who is um, an associate fellow in Integrity UK and a doctoral candidate at the School of Oriental and African Studies, SOAS. Um, Start with you, uh, Mayar. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I've been working with Iraqi, um, and I'll only speak today about Iraq because that's my area of expertise, so I can't speak about um, civil society in the Middle East. That's for the other speakers that will cover that, uh, um, to um, that uh, broader issue. My, um, I've worked in Baghdad since 2003, first with the uh, multiple number of NGOs that sprang up um, in the aftermath of dictatorship and I've worked on multiple programs, international, domestic programs in, in the country. Um, NGOs play a key part, and civil society plays a key part in the country. Um, and, and beyond the, the news we hear today, there are organizations and domestic organizations that work to heal Iraqi society from the abuse of dictatorship, and increasingly from um, what's happening today in Mosul, which has um, um, a negative repercussion on wider society, and not just on the people of Mosul or the areas that are affected, but across the country, including in Basra and Baghdad. Um, I believe that civil society um, needs to have a, um, a, a, an increase, a, a strengthened role to, pl to play a, 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 a more important role in the, in the country's politics and in society. Um, what we found, what, what, from my research, I'm a PhD, um, that I'm looking at state building and the formation of the Iraqi NGO sector after 2003, most of the aid, international aid, actually shifts with the interests of um, 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 the US administration. And today, for instance, I mean, before we had security interests and the money was revolving around that. And today we have humanitarian interests and the money revolves around that. And so, um, those, those issues are very important, those key sectors, security and humanitarian affairs are very important. But we really need to have a, um, a negotiation with the Iraqi civil society actors and the NGOs that play a key role in Iraq today to solve some of those problems that we, that we all experience. Transition hasn't happened fully in the country, transition to democracy that we all yearn for, but I believe that civil society and different groups and actors in the country outside um, um, the, the politics of um, the po political parties and the, the elites that control the country, or at least control the, um, the formal politics of the country. Um, and so I'm open to any of your questions. I, I, um, I'll leave it for further questions. I would like to maybe hear the other speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Um, our next speaker is Naila Tabara. Naila is Lebanese, and she's the vice chairperson of the Adyan Foundation as well as the director of the Adyan Institute, which means religion in Arabic, because she also holds a PhD in science of religions. Um, I'll leave the floor to you. Um, thank you, Radhi. Um, it's just now, before entering here, uh, we have news of, uh, of Lebanon, that there's an explosion in, uh, in the suburbs, uh, southern suburbs of Lebanon, with uh, until now 37 persons uh, dead. This is part of the sectarian. Uh, Situation that we are in. Um, so this this the sectarian narrative is related to what is happening, and what is happening is also related to the sectarian narrative. And we are in this this uh, this vicious circle. Um, I would I had prepared to start with something else actually to start with a personal experience that I had. I was born in 1972. You can count my age. At the age of three, the uh, war in Lebanon started, uh, uh, and 
uh, when I was three uh, uh, in 1975. The war ended in 1990. In 2000, I went to study in Rome. And this, when I was in Rome, there was a, uh, I'm a Muslim, there was a, uh, there was a monk, a, uh, a Lebanese Maronite monk, who told me, let's sit down and talk about the jokes we had about each other during the war. I was like, what is he talking about? And then he said, yes, yes, let's do that. And we started telling each other the jokes we had about each other, our side, their side. And we were, he was so right. It was so true that the jokes just tell you how we perceive the other. And some tell you that it all starts with jokes. And then we built it up, build it up, build it up, and becomes a sectarian narrative against the other, demonizing the other, making fun of the other, and then demonizing <coughs> the other. This experience also allowed me to understand that there is a, uh, the sectarian narrative is not only religious, but it's also political. It is also seeing, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, then I saw that I, I, what I thought I had as truth about all the, uh, uh, the history of the war, all the events of the war, was just part of it, and was just the vision of my community, and a blurred vision, sort of, or the way they wanted to see it, with a selective memory, and that the other had the other part, with selective memory. And this has been a very important uh, moment in my, uh, in, in my work and in my life in, uh, in, uh, in dialogue, because I realized that political is uh, as, as important as interfaith. Um, so this has led, uh, among other things, to the foundation of, uh, to, to, to me as being one of the founders of Adyan Foundation, where, among other things, also we work on the religious narrative. It is very important to accept, one, that we do have sectarian narratives and not say that we don't. We do have that. It is normal because we are either war societies or post-war societies. So it's normal to have that because this is how it functions generally. This is the dynamics. So let's accept it, to accept that there is a problem in order to, uh, uh, to, 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 uh, to go further. The th second thing is, uh, we need to accept also that our religious text and our religious discourse is also sectarian. We have words that we use to describe the other that, uh, that we need to work on, that we need to explain. We have words uh, that, we, what, that we use between, uh, I would start to say, from the, from the Muslim uh, community, we have words we use when we, we are talking about Christian or other uh, communities. Uh, that we need to restudy. Uh, we have words today that are used between Sunnis and Shias that we really need to get out of our dictionary. Uh, so we need to be working on religious perception of others. This is one of the things that we work on in Adyan Foundation because the first thing generally people ask each other when they meet is, how do you perceive me? What do you think about me? Uh, am I, uh, is there salvation for me? Am I an infidel? Who am I for you? So that is one of the basic things that allows to bridge the gaps, to, to, to get people closer together. That is at least on the religious, uh, on the religious discourse and the religious narrative. I will step here and maybe continue with the questions. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. you. Thank you so much. I think the, the idea of narrative is an important one, and which brings me to, um, to Sarah Lashmawi, who is uh, from Egypt, and she's, you're, you're not, right now you're a research analyst uh, here in London on corporate intelligence uh, team at KPMG. But before that, you worked in, uh, as a program manager on freedom of religion and belief um, at Minority Rights in Group International. And there was a lot about the narrative in Egypt at the time. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. OK. Um, so the, to talk about uh, religious religious minorities and sectarian narratives in Egypt is uh, really complex, but I think uh, an easy way to understand it, especially if you, you will operate in the context as a civil society organization, is that you have the state as an actor who produces a certain narrative about uh, minorities and about identity in general, where uh, religious minorities don't exist and sectarian tensions don't exist and we have this one fabric and one nation 
where everyone is basically the same. And then you have non-state actors who produce narratives such as religious institutions, and they have very specific ways of talking about the other, just like Nairo was saying. Um, so uh, who is the other? Do we like them? Do we not like them? And uh, who do we recognize an, as an other, and who do we not recognize as an other? So when a Shia leader gets um, murdered in, in Egypt, for the first reaction of Egyptians is, I did not know we had Shia in Egypt. So, so this is quite uh, interesting in terms of then how do we, people wonder how do they extend their sectarian narratives to these new groups who were invisible before, especially in a, in a time where everyone is trying to reformulate their identity, including their religious identity. And then you have the media, obviously, who also uh, formulate uh, religious sectarian narratives and talk about sectarianism in a certain very specific way. And in the middle of all this, civil society has to walk this very fine line where they have to counter uh, narratives that, uh, that encourage sectarianism and sectarian violence, but at the same time wa don't want to be exacerbating differences between communities and uh, kind of shedding light, light more about what's different than about what's common and how can we bridge, um, how can we bridge understanding between these communities. And as a, someone who was implementing a, a, a human rights program in, in this context, so everyone is really, it's a hot topic, but everyone is really so sensitive about talking about it. Um, we were wondering, as, as a, an organization, how do you talk about it without really talking about it? And we found a really, uh, I think, crazy but very creative solution, and that is let's do street theater in Egypt. Let's reenact scenes of discrimination in front of people where they can um, recognize themselves as a victim but also as a perpetrator as a participant in the sectarian narrative and realize and engage with the problem without feeling really exposed about their own behaviors and create this safe space where people question how they deal with religion in, in the everyday basis and how they interact with people. And I think uh, this is one way, one very effective way we found to tackle a hot topic such as sectarianism and to invite people to create their own narratives about religion and about who they are. And this is, I think, the way that you start uh, countering sectarian narratives is, is to empower people to create their own narrative about identity and you know, kind of be able to say, to all these other actors who have a specific agenda, well, I'm sorry, this is the way I understand my narrative about uh, religion. Possibly. Quite a challenge as well. Um, Adin, uh, just to remind you everyone that you can use your uh, translation, uh, your, your devices for, for translation. Um, Adin is a lawyer. He's also a social uh, and political activist in Lebanon. Um, as we, you were saying before, Naila, I mean, the country has seen lots of bouts of violence and you, you did your contribution to community in a very tough situation. Can you tell us more about your experience, Adin? At first, I'm Lebanese. I uh, am uh, Alawite. And unfortunately, Lebanon is governed by sectarian uh, cantons and those uh, sectarian uh, splinters are also uh, fought by other uh, actors in Lebanon who are working on building an identity, a uh, national identity and citizenship in Lebanon. I uh, have lived in an area in Tripoli between Jabal Muhsin and Bab at Tibbani. One has a majority of Sunnis and the other has a majority of Alawite. And unfortunately, uh, that fight between the two communities was portrayed as a sectarian uh, fight rather than a political motivated one. And this 
uh, was something that was untrue. We wanted to uh, highlight that this is a pure political uh, conflict rather than a sectarian one. And there were some uh, people who were trying to portray the Alawites as those who are affiliated to Bashar al-Assad's uh, government. Uh, and we, on the other hand, tried to say that the Alawites in Lebanon are there to serve the Lebanese and in the service of Lebanon and is under the authority of the state. And our first affiliation and loyalty is to the Lebanese and the Lebanese army. And from that point of view, I thought about the idea of educating people and deepening the understanding of people of the Alawites. And I started working in Jabal Mohsen in order to boost and to support the idea of citizenship. From that point of view, we have attempted to uh, connect and network, connect and make networks between some uh, organizations and society between uh, Jabal Mohsen and uh, Tel Tabani and tried to put on the table the worries and concerns of both uh, people in order to find what is the common denominator that can bring those people together in order to unite people. And I was uh, one of the people who called for holding a meeting and a conference in order to listen to the worries and concerns of the minorities in Lebanon. What I want to say really is that until today, Lebanon, unfortunately, uh, has it a very difficult uh, to look at the issue of citizenship, of people belonging to Lebanon rather than belonging to certain uh, sects and denominations. And I think that the uh, idea of moving towards uh, secularization uh, is an idea that has been put across uh, to portray that one sect uh, has the majority uh, of affiliates, therefore it will impose its ideas on others. And that's what's happening in Syria. And the real uh, uh, intellectuals in Syria were the ones who have tried to build a system and that they are the people that will have uh, the system of plurality rather than having one sect uh, that will dominate others. I say that this transitional period, be it political, social, or economic, needs heroes, needs uh, epic people in order to help others cross that road. But I must say uh, that issue is not going to be dealt with only with courage, but people have to be educated and understand. People have to understand that in order to move to the future, they have to understand their present and past. In Syria, unfortunately, uh, there wasn't enough time to have educated and cultured people uh, to uh, take uh, the stance and I think that we need that class, a class of educated and cultured people in Syria in order to help others. In Lebanon, unfortunately, we are not able to bring about this experience in our country because things have moved in a different way. We uh, were pushed towards uh, the idea of peace and a peace that was brought about under the auspices of Syria rather than a peace that was brought about by the very hands of the, the Lebanese people. Uh, and I think this uh, is, is something that maybe can be as a lesson learned for Syria in order to involve its people. I hope that everybody in the Middle East uh, will have the opportunity to have peace and security. Thank you very much indeed.